Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Golf Stream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Brian Nano. It is a absolutely spectacular Sunday morning. The humidity is down. The temperature this morning when I was at about 7 o'clock was just fantastic. We got a fast made track. We got firm turf course. We got the all-weather Tapita. And we got, what, $150,000 gross jackpot guarantee. Yeah, so uh, no tickets yesterday, right? That was crazy. I, we I got still to haven't the end. figured that out. I know. So we're back here today with $150,000 in that gross jackpot guarantee. We're on the turf. The pools have been huge. We'll get to my pick five in a second. The pick fives yesterday, 269 and 264 they handled. The pools are big. This rainbow is going to grow exponentially over the next, you know, weeks and, and I, months. I think there's over 100 grand in the pool already, yeah. right, or something like that. So, and, and what a great way to start it with a mile in the 16th on the turf. Oh, claim is Phillies and Mavs. We've got a full field of 12. Scratch the number 13, the uh, also eligible. And Brian put a ticket together here for the first of two pick fives today. This is a wild race. I mean, I'm, I'm last day of me making the line here at Four to one favorite, so you can tell the depth in the competition in this race. Race number two, I go to the. There's Safi's got two firsters in there. I'll go with the five. You know, I guess you got to enunciate that. We'll mm. see what Pete does with that. Uh, the the single is Juan, who's going to be a very very short price for Pletcher on the drop, and then a three by three double to get out. One two three, right in the order. They called that the old Joe Bush at the Oswego yeah. OTB back oh, in yeah. the day. You know when right. I. Used to, I won't say I held court there like you probably would have. But, and then Insatiable on top in race five. The turf races today are so good. And speaking about this first race here, Milan the 16th on the turf. Claim is Phillies and Mears, three-year-olds and up. They're going to run this one at the, the rail setting of 56 feet this afternoon. I did go with the number six, and so did Brian. <laughs> That's my long shot. <laughs> that, wait, get out of here. This is my top pick in here. How can it be your long shot? Uh, Serenaded Kitten, who's moves to the Amador Sanchez barn after the claim, returns to what has been... Her preferred surface, eight races, four wins a second and a third. What's you know, your angle? Yeah, that's one of them. And now, uh, you know, Amador Sanchez, you, you'd have to think he claimed her back in October knowing we're coming back on the turf. Mm. She's four for eight. This is a barn I've talked about the last few days. I expect, I think, I hope, going to get rolling during the December into the championship meet like he did last year. We've talked about this. Now we're back on the turf. This is the same turf course, just obviously better than, better than ever. But if you've handled it before, you're supposed to handle it again. She has. You got that stat on Amador. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Thank you, Ronnie. I'll bring that up, too. Uh, you know, we don't have a lot of these to Pete at a turf, but here's a barn that has done it pretty well. Three for 13. I think it is significant. The ROI predictably big as well. This, again, this is a barn I'm looking to get on. I, I'm, I'm looking to catch before maybe everybody else Is that does. really your long shot today? 10 to 1. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. So we'll see how they're taking some money in there. What about the number 8 Mosler's image who's debuting locally for Mike Trombetta? Uh, consistent turf campaign up north. I want to go back and show you this horse's race at Laurel uh, on October 22nd. First, we're going to show you this horse going in and out of the far turn and, and get shuffled back. You're going to just see this horse. It's, you know, one of those typical races. Just You see him putting on the brakes. Just never gets. And here you see him getting shuffled out of the whole thing. And, you know, so now you have to go inside, go outside. You got to figure it just gets shuffled back to last in the whole field, just about. And then you're going to see this horse tip out and rallied, uh, you know, along the inside and just runs good to be third in there. And I just thought that race, uh, you know, with the early trouble, this horse was okay. Finally got some room on the inside. Was it too late? Maybe. Still kept coming on yeah. to get third in there. Was not giving it up. And, you know, it's a, you look at its recent third place finish. That was a Maryland bred, those $50,000 overnight handicaps that they run up there. This horse has a touch of class. Yeah, I, I agree. This is a, She's a major player in here. Mike Trombetta, we're starting to see him run more horses now. He's a barn that is going to win races in December, is going to win races in the championship meet like he has each and every year. What would you see with Zodiac Princess? Well, let's uh, see here. You know, the, the outside posts, are, where are we at here? Zodiac, excuse me, the four. Yeah, the back. look at the back turf form. This is another horse we've talked about now. 10 for 19 in the exacta at Gulfstream Park. Those are the best races. I, the worry is she hasn't done any running on the Tapita. Now, if you're a fan of her, you're just going to hope and, and say she doesn't like it. If she gets back to those turf races for Laura Cesaris, those are the best races here, Rob. 
The number 10, don't mess with Tess, the previous winner on the Gulfstream turf, returns to the grass. She used her speed to win three of five recent route races on the torpedo for Carlos David. And Miguel Vasquez, leading rider in the saddle this afternoon. They thought that horse had a, a decent shot there. And, and it's just a great betting rate. There's no other way to look at it. Though. You know, as you said, Brian made a 41 favorite, and that's what the current favorite is right now with plenty of time <laughs> to wager in that race. Uh, second race is a seven furlong made an optional claimer for Phillies two-year-olds. Optional take is 50000 Jockey change on the four. Make that rider Lionel Reyes. And you went with the number five here. One of two first-time starters from Safi. You know a daughter valent minister. Yeah, I mean, Edgar Zayas lands here. I think you need to pay attention to that and just kind of take note. Obviously, he's top rider for Safi. The dam was a real workhorse. 12 for 55. Took her three starts to break her maiden. This is her first fall. A couple of these works do whisper ready. Ronnie, I mean, Safi's now, I say he's up to 18%. I feel like he was about 11%, 12%, maybe three or four months ago. His first-time starters, I don't know if the program has changed or what. Boy, they are all seemingly running. Tab the tote, too. This horse favored. This horse is supposed to be favored in here. Yeah, we have a tri flip flopped around here. I got the Fender Gal on top of stretching out the seven furlongs, proving she could compete at the 50 level. She finished that stalk to pace second, going three quarters for a Kathleen. Going to use Paco this afternoon. And Cistern um, goes to the Jose D'Angelo barn. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was the interesting one. None of these horses that we've seen in the afternoon have really run that fast. If you know can run, the rest of them are going to be in trouble. Let's go to race number three this afternoon. This one's a mile on the turf, maiden optional claimers. These are two-year-old fillies. The optional tag is 50,000. Scratch the two, Frosty O'Toole. This was one of your singles in here, and that is the number three one, the $360,000 daughter of Good Magic. If she doesn't win today, <laughs> I don't know if she's ever going to win. This is a spot. She's coming out of two races. The winner of her debut comes at, eventually runs in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. It's the maiden special weight drop. It's Todd Pletcher. It's Luis Saez. Welcome back to our defending jocks champion as well. The blinkers for a little more early focus, which I think could be significant to dropping way too far out of it early in her races. Yeah, that's what sort of sold me, but all the reasons yeah. you mentioned, but I thought the blinkers too, but not, not been very pretty in his first nope. couple of starts there's no doubt about all it. what about the four that we both have in second super tropical is stretching out to the mile on the grass after debuting locally to finish third it was against maiden special weight foes was going five and a half on the torpedo mike trumbetter he's 18 percent with horses going from all weather uh to turf he does it a lot up yeah. north so he gets a pretty sizable stat there and you, and you know you're getting luca panici in the saddle today thought these were the lie we got the same exact yeah. try up there. Yeah. it's that kind of race uh, mike does such a good job this is a lot Live Oak homebred now stretching out the American Pharaohs. We've kind of always said they've been a little bit better on turf, actually. Let's go to race number four this afternoon. This one's going to be on the Tapita at about a mile and 70 yards. Claim is Phillies and Mears, three and up. Not one is of two, 8,000. Did have a scratch in here of the number 10 horse, first gold. So nine will go to the post. And let's start it off with your horse in here, who you made, I think, two to one on the morning line. And that is Silky Warrior, the Irish bread. I mean, this is a monumental class drop. I have no idea what we're going to get today, to be perfectly honest with you. This horse has been in one X's at Kentucky Downs and Keeneland and now here you go for eight so what do we get well the leading you know our leading rider of last year Luis Saez is going to ride that's got to be significant the class drop here is huge we'll just see this horse did blow the break last time so I think you can be a little bit more forgiving than the total no show what beating 28 plus you have uh, the number two elusive uncaptured in second and you get a stat from Kathleen O'Connell Listen, Kathleen's long overdue to get going. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Both my partner and I like him, like her, excuse me, quite a bit. This has always been her kind of uh, go-to stat. 23% with a big ROI routing on the Tapita Ron. Second off a little bit of a layoff for elusive uncaptured. Second time back here in South Florida. Maybe we get the wake up for this four-year-old daughter of uncaptured. The number three whatnot is where I went to. You have a third is wheeling back after following a 12-5 maiden victory, going nine furlongs on the torpedo. She rallied to finish second at this level and distance last time out. I, I love the connections, Lionel Reyes, along with, of course, the trainer, Elizabeth Dobles. And, and you know what? If the one doesn't run, I think you go anywhere. And the one has not been pretty, but it was against, as you said, significantly tougher competition. Yeah. Trying to beat that horse today, to be perfectly honest. I don't blame you in the least. Uh, you know, Liz in an imaginary state. 
stables yeah. do such good, and then put Lee and Al for the kind of the trifecta there. Those three team them up together, do good work. We'll take a short break. When I come back, I'll have my Rainbow Six with that one hundred and fifty thousand dollar gross jackpot guarantee. It's probably the most beautiful racetrack in the country, to be honest with you. The background is just beautiful. I love Gulfstream Park because of the grandstand and the racing. The weather is beautiful. The facility is phenomenal. The Gulfstream Championship Meet has become one of the top events of the year. You could come out on a Wednesday and see a future Preakness winner. Marco! They're off in the Preakness. The run happy Santa Anita Derby. Got the unique six and a half down the hillside turf course. A whole lot of great racing here in California. And uh, we're off. We have all three surfaces here, the only racetrack in the country to have all three surfaces. Being close to the ocean, being surrounded by some of the greatest horses and riders in history, it's, it's amazing. It's the prettiest thing you've ever seen. There's no one else has a background like we do. Welcome back, Gulfstream Today, Ron. And Brian, fifth race is going to be a mile in the turf allowance. Optional claim is scratch the eight, scratch the 11. Here's where the Rainbow Six starts. Let's look at my ticket, $48.60. We'll talk about the really good fifth race in a moment. I did go three deep in race number six with Cage, Pixie, Capidre, and Starship Nug Nugget is probably the one to beat in there. Got my long shot in race number seven. It's the three Brazilian air. Going to try and beat the horse that's going to be odds on in there, Avon. But uh, uh, mile in the 16 may be a little short. We'll see how that works out. Race number eight, Grand Slash rolling on. They dueled with each other. Zydeco Scratched out of last week to run today. My single comes in race number nine. It's Wonker for Billy Mata, who had a nice win yesterday. Ooh. And in the last race, I went three deep with perfect provision, Boston Princess, and number five, Cupid Austin, $48.60 for me. I'm with you. Uh, the post is not ideal for Wonka, but she's mm. supposed to win. She's too good for that field to me. Best bet of the day for me. Yeah. So we copied again. So, all right. <laughs> was, the one, was the race one your long shot, too? No. Okay. No, 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 no. That, that's where we differ a little bit today. My, we just joke with each other. Mile on the turf, allowance optional claim. If Phillies and Bears, three year olds and up, that tag is 25000 Our turf races have been fantastic thus far. Scratch the 8 and 11. Insatiable uh, looks like a major player in here, both Brian and I think so. Before we talk about it, let's go back and see her race on October 27th. It's race 8 at Keeneland. First, we're going to show her coming out of the far turn now. She is the number three horse in there. And you, she, she's just a typical, you know, you got to try and get some room. She was sort of boxed in. I didn't want to show you from all the way back, but she was sort of boxed in through the whole turn going out and just, you know, trying to find that seam and then does find a seam and gets the lead. And there you see her on the inside, but in didn't hold on to it, but I just thought it was a good performance, and it wasn't a lot to see there, just trying to find a good trip, but I think the turn back to the mile is going to help this daughter of Constitution. You don't often see a horse run at five and a half, five times in a <laughs> row, and then go right out to nine. That's a good effort right there, because that was a big ask by a Hall of Fame trainer. Now Todd's going to cut her back. She's drawn perfectly for this mile trip. When we get and talk about the 10, we'll say conversely how rough of a post it is. This is perfect for Insatiable. Yeah, and who rode the horse last time? Louis Saibes, oh, yeah. who rides it again today. Louis Saez, so he knows this daughter of Constitution. Blue Times is returning locally for Danny Gargan and cutting back to the mile. Showed speed and weakened in those allowance races up north. Yeah, it gets to go a stall over with the nine coming out, but the eight coming out, excuse me. But, boy, this is not a good post. At least she does have speed, but Lionel's probably going to have to use it to get some position out there because, boy, that's a quick run to the turn run. I, I think she's got to use her speed to run well in Agreed. here. I think that's the whole key in Alien Ray, Lila Reyes, as you mentioned. Then the number one horse in here. Well, we always got the same super, just our last third horses fixed around. The number one, Fuente of Juna. Uh, this one, the British bred, is making the third start of her recent form cycle. She followed that third place finish going to Milan on the Keeneland turf and an even fourth place finish against allowance runners going to Milan the 16th on the Aquatuck turf. What does that say to me? Sort of a good horse, consistent. This looks like a good spot, 25 optional claimer. Brendan Walsh, love the work that he does, yeah. and Miguel Vasa is going to sit here. Sharp, patient horseman. Uh, you know, I moved her up. I, I like, mm -hmm. remember the 11. Let's see yeah. when standoff comes back. I think she can run for Kelly mm -hmm. Green. Probably didn't like the parking lot post today. I moved the one up, but you got Miguel. You got a really, really strong, patient horseman in Brendan Walsh. I would expect 
prospect this horse makes a little bit of a dent. Yeah, and I was torn between putting the one and the four, who yeah. you did fourning in third. You know, just matter of flip-flop and that one from Safi Joseph Jr. Came off the bench to run a good second, going five furlongs on the tapita. They're going to know where she is. I would think Edgar puts her on the lead in here, Edgar, uh, off this stretch out. We'll see what she does. She ran okay in the stakes. That was only against three-year-olds. Take note of that. Let's go to race number six this afternoon. And this one is going to be on the main track at seven furlongs. The main track, by the way, is fast. The turf course is firm. Phillies three or four and up. Non-winners of three in life, $6,250. Scratch a red day's challenge, the number three. Brian put his late pick five ticket together. Let's check it out. Tough sequence, $40 for me, a uh, two-by-two two double to get it started. I'm going to try to beat a bond today with yes this time. I go four deep in race eight. This is a problem race. There's no doubt about it. I went to the outside, hard to handle. The single, as Ronnie and I talked about, Wonka is supposed to win the ninth race with the class that she has and I'll throw a dart at the wall and hopefully it lands on number seven perfect provision in a spread race though in the tenth if I'm alive I kind of hope it doesn't land on her because I want some other prices but that's where I went yeah, I used Boston Princess. I think uh, you, the only one we're different in the last is Cupid Austin. I just threw on that ticket. Uh, getting back to race number six, I did go with the five in here, Brian Cage Pixie. She's turning back to seven furlongs after becoming the only four-time winner in the field when she drew clear to win at a mile last time out uh, for Gerald Brooks. You got his Mario Villa Lobos going for two in a row. I'm using that angle. It's been good to me. Four-time winner in the field. I'll go there with this horse on top. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt she woke up in a big way last time. I just wonder if maybe she comes back a little bit. The barn has been very, very hot to start this meet, running a limited number of horses. You know, a Starship Nugget, probably the one to be dropping today to the 6,250 level. Yeah, and Paco's here, right? This drop is big. She breaks dead last from the rail last time and still was a pretty decent enough fourth. You see the, the race to Vandalia, two back. Um, I think on this drop, she's going going to be trouble with this group. You know, the number seven horse in here we both have in second, Capidre, is another turning back to seven-eighths of a mile today. Duel throughout and finished second by Cage Pixie going eight furlongs. So if Cage Pixie, you think, comes back, maybe this one will be there this time with Miguel Vasquez trying to reverse that previous outcome. Yeah, claimed off Ronaldo Richard, so we'll see if we can improve. This barn is 22% off the claim. She was seven to ten last time, Ron, mm -hmm. whereas Cage Pixie was five to one. That's why I made this one the favorite over her. And I like the fact that she's outside of her, too. I think that's a big deal. Absolutely love race number seven this afternoon. A mile in the 16th on the turf. Allowance optional claimer. Three-year-olds and up. The optional tag is $62,500. Scratch the six journeyman and the seven dominate the moment. And I have my long shot in here, so I'll kick it off. And that's Brazilian Air. 15-1 uh, to 1 on the morning line. is going to try and make it five turf victories in a row after coming off the bench to defeat those entry-level allowance runners. Going nine furlongs on the Keeneland turf jeremiah engelhart luca panici this one just loves to win i figure if i can get a price here i know all about a bond you're trying to beat a bond i'm trying to beat a bond not only with yes this time but maybe with a little bit of a price horse with brazilian air you know someone tweeted at me this morning about this horse I, this horse has to be 15 i think this horse might be 20 to 1 because a bond is going to bottom out the field you got no. yes this time you got a lot of speed you, listen yeah. you're going for what five wins in a row now this is a Seismic step up in class, but Jeremiah Englehart, who wins a lot of races in New York and will win races down here this winter, has Brazilian Air going really, really good. In for 62.5, claim for 35. There's no worry there. We'll see what happens today. I'm going to take a trip down memory lane oh and show you, yes, this time winning the, the, in May, winning the English Channel Stakes. And we're going to pick it up from the top of the stretch. Home, she is the number, he is the number 10 in this race. He was dead last early on. I didn't want to show you where he was, but he was dead last and he just comes flying in the stretch. And it was just a powerful performance by him. So, uh, you know, if you pick it up a little further back, I mean, this, he was so far behind the furl field early on, he just out classed him right to the wire. Uh, this horse likes it here too and that's why I took him. The other thing too, now he's four for six over the turf course here. That's yes this time. He's much more suited for a mile and a 16th. He might want to run a little farther, too, but we'll get to a bond in a second. A bond, they can't run a race far enough for a bond. He wants to run all day long. We've got Paco. Uh, he's going to sit the right kind of trip. There's a lot of speed in this race. I just wonder with a bond, a lot of things going on with him. 
It's a little sharp for him at a mile and 16th. And let's just be honest, this is a kickoff to what Todd Pletcher hopes is a really big 2023. You, made four, you mentioned four out of six. Yeah. Those were four in a row with yeah, the English Channel being the kicker in that race. So it was definitely a good performance. I'm on a previous winner at the distance. So you can go back and make yes. a case that this horse can run well. You know, uh, kicks off his fall campaign with a series of turf races. He, he was going long, you included. He set the pace in the two-mile Belmont yeah. Gold Cup. He loves to run long. He's got some speed. So does he yep. go up there and try and steal it with Luis Saez? I don't think he's going to be on the lead. There's too much speed to his inside. Your guy, Brazilian Air, has got a bunch of it. Grand Journey is not letting anyone get away too far early. Edgard's down inside with Calibrator. For a turf route, there is a lot of hitting in here. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Great betting race there. If you don't like a bond, you can make some money. And that usually happens a bond wins by eight. <laughs> so you know that story, right? I'm sure. Eighth race, six for Owings Allowance. Uh, this is state-bred two-year-olds. The purse is $54,000. We have uh, seven in the field here. And Brian, will start it off with your horse in here, and that is the number seven. Hard to handle. I have a little further down on the ticket. You know what? I, I think he should be a decent enough price, and I'm just kind of following Lou Saez a little bit. And I think he's on the right post here, too. There is a lot of speed in this race. And if you got to go back a little bit, but look at hard to handles last time he sprinted. This was a really, really strong win. It was a relatively slow win. He's got to run faster today. But I think now we know two turns is not his thing. Awesome strong is not his thing. Tapita is not his thing. He's back doing what he wants to do today with... I don't know, for my money, as good a jockey as we have in the country. Uh, without a doubt, that's a half to jilted bride that had looked up a grade three uh, stakes place, went over $500. Thousand dollars Grand Slash undefeated in two previous races at the distance. Wheels back, battled back to defeat. Let's go show you this race. I thought it was great between Grand Slash and Rolling On last time out. We're going to pick it up. And you see Rolling On gets the lead now as they turn for home. And, you know, Pete actually calls it out and says he got the lead. But look on the inside. Grand Slash is not giving it up and just fights back. And you're going to see these two right to the wire. And I just thought it was a game performance. You could count on one hand how many times we Horses come back, you know, during the stretch. And this one powered through the stretch to win it. Of course, Grand Slash from Victor Barboza Jr., Lionel Reyes. I think you got a stat on this horse. Yeah, I, we'll take a look at it now. And, and uh, this is just kind of how, you know, when Victor gets them good, they, they tend to stay good. 22% here the last five years winning dirt sprints last out. You just saw that video. And what I took away from that video, Ron, is it flatters Grand Slash a lot more than it flatters Rolling On. And Rolling On is now down inside in a race loaded with speed. I think that's a problem for him. The other thing, too, I wonder if can they both double back around after such a strong run. I was sort of like in Zydeco last time, you yeah. know, in that race to two. Now turning back to three quarters of a mile, surrendered a late lead when finishing second against those optional claimers going seven. He's evaluated for class this afternoon, I think, in this spot with Sonny Leone in the saddle. I liked him last time when he scratched out of that race. Yeah, and Shaq Diesel went up to Tampa yesterday and, and, and didn't really fire his shot. It remains to be seen. What way is Zydeco going? Well, let's go to race number nine this afternoon. One mile on the turf, an allowance optional claimer. Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. Optional claiming price, 25000 Really nice field of 10. Going to go to the post with no scratches. Jockey changes. Both Brian and I like the number uh, 10 horse in here, Wonka. I'm going to go back to March 27th. This is race four at Gulfstream Park. I'm going to show the 316th pole home when she tips out and breaks her maiden that day. Now you're going to see her. She is the number five. And you can see that day she was the three to five favorite. Now it's been a while back, but uh, as we said, Brian, and I've been hanging on to all these horse for course angle type horse and this was a really nice performance by this horse and you know you got Bill Mott now last Brian on the on the main track in the Glen Cove yeah I, I feel like she could be set up for a pretty significant for soon to be four-year-old Philly campaign Ron I mean she hinted at it last year as a three-year-old stakes kind of fringe filly. We just saw one yesterday from Bill Coleridge. We'll show it in the lightning round. Who, oh boy, I think is going places, and he's a three-year-old. This could be the three-year-old filly kind of version. Coleridge hinted at a lot. Wonka did too. Now we're bigger, stronger, tougher, soon to be four. I think you better look out.
And the, uh, I went with the number three in second, Brian. I'll kick it off there with Tech Gallaro. He's turning back to the mile after setting the pace. Got caught late in back-to-back -back allowance races going a mile in his 16th at Laurel and Pimlico, respectively. For uh, Michael Matz, you're getting Julian Leperu, hoping maybe this one will be in that first flight and run well in well, here. Well, it's interesting because uh, as you were talking, I knew exactly what you were thinking. We love <laughs> Julian on the lead. I don't know if he can make it here. Mm -hmm. Luis Saez, very aggressive, is down inside with Torres. We'll see. They're on paper, Ron, and it doesn't always shake out that way when the gates open. There's some speed in this race. What'd you see with Regal Realm? Well, I think it's Paco here, and look at the turf races now. I know there are Delaware and Belmont and Monmouth for Jonathan Thomas. They were pretty strong races. The fact that we're outside the Taurus and Tequilera, I think, is a positive. We'll see what Paco does, though. Obviously, he can be aggressive early, too. Yeah, trained by Jonathan Thomas, and Horse Taurus is another try turning back to the mile. Now, he also shows speed. He got caught uh, at the wire and went third against allowance runners. That was going eight and a half furlongs on that wonky Churchill turf course. Luis Saez will oversee his, I think it's the inside speed without a doubt. Yeah, and I think everything we've just said is flattering Wonka that much more yeah, yeah. because they're going to hit up front. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of speed yes. and tons of really good speed in that race. Race number 10 this afternoon, about five and a half furlongs on the torpedo. Claimers, Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, non-winners of two in life, 12-5 uh, down to 10. Brian picked everybody, but we did end up with the same horse on top. Perfect provision who's dropping to the 12 level and stepping up off the claim uh, after stepping Stepping up off the claim by Carlos David and finishing went up and set the pace, you know, fader, but that's against 25 optional claimers going five. It's Luis Saez's day today. He's back. We picked him in a lot of races, and I, I think he he's the one to fear in the finale. He, he might make the he might be fourth in the standings <laughs> if he has a day. We're kind of thinking he might here. Boy, is he if he's not, we're in big trouble. <laughs> yeah, he is live here. Uh, Ronnie said it. This drop is, is huge. I don't know if Carlos doesn't like this horse or what. He claimed for 22 back. Took a big shot last time. It didn't work out. Now we're in for 12-5. Listen, it's not ideal, but I wonder if from this post with the speed, I still think that uh, Perfect Provision's in a good spot. I had some interest in the number four horse near Boston Princess who broke a maiden at this level and it was on the torpedo. Going back to the all-weather surface, it showed some brief interest and faded against two lifetime claimers going six on the dirt. I think that was an ambitious try. It's Ronnie Spatz. You've got in, uh, Paco Lopez. So it's a combo drop down and surface switch today. They're probably going to bet this horse. I wanted to make this horse five or six. I couldn't do it. I spent too much time on this race to begin with. <laughs> it's Paco, a big torpedo win, two back. They'll probably bet this horse and she makes sense i certainly use she was the last one i used in yeah. my pick five yeah i mean she figures in yeah. there cupid austin also the yeah you got the 12 solaire was going to break from the outside for victor barbos with mcl well that was a crazy fast race last time now can we get back to it we're also facing winners we're also breaking from the far outside that was a big effort last time and uh, is how we see the 10 race cards. And as we said at the beginning, it is a great card to bet today, especially those turf races. And we're going to go right to our lightning round. And as Brian also alluded to, we saw a horse that was pretty nice yesterday from Bill Mott, Coleridge. And I, I, I think that was a pretty nice performance. And you know what? Great ride by yeah, Edgar good, Prado. That's a good point. The Hall of Famer delivered a Hall of Fame ride here. You know the Judd Mott Silks. We know them all quite well. You saw Bill up close and personal. It was good to see him here yesterday. And maybe we kind of said, you know what, maybe he's here. You better look out. I, I'm going to tell you what. I didn't – I picked Coleridge second. The post I didn't like. If you were a Coleridge fan, you got like $9 and something yesterday. Boy, oh, boy, Christmas came early for you. Yeah, everybody was saying that after the race there, and it's the old – uh, you know, Bill Mott on the grounds angle, you know, in, uh, in uh, November and December. Your best bet today? Yeah, well, it's Wonka, you know, uh, in race nine. Yeah. That's the single. You're not going to get a lot of value there, single her in the late. And yeah, my best bet is in, uh, what, what is my, oh, it's Wonka. Yeah, what was I saying? I forgot already. they are going there. Now your long shot is right in the opener. Long shot's about 25 minutes <laughs> away from now, and that is the number six Serenata kit, and it's crazy early in the betting. Four to one morning line favorite in this race. This is the, this is the best betting race of the day coming up. And my long shot, Brazilian Air at 15 to one in race number seven, trying to beat the heavy heads in there yep. at 15 to one. We'll see if we can do that. Horse has certainly been on a tear. Uh, you know, dominant. Is, I guess that's what you put in it. Had to be, right? That's the only word you can use. Watch this. This is a horse <laughs> up at Laurel winning the, winning the Maryland Juvenile yesterday. But I think post time. Look at this. <laughs> the old jiggy jog, right? <laughs> this is the jiggy jog in yes. the park. And, I, you know, this was a Maryland restricted race. I think old post time's a lot more in the Maryland bread. I, I just... 
I wonder where we see him next. I don't know. Don't you have to? The Holy Bulls coming up here. This, this was an awesome, awesome effort. He was yeah. way back. He, way, and he just came by. And it, the best was the jock looked over his right shoulder for about a half a second and then just went by. Never ever moved his hands through the stretch. And the horse that he ran down was also even money, loose on the lead, your buddy Johnny Z from Albany. So it wasn't like he was, you know, he got set up in that race. That was a powerful run. And, you know, uh, starting next week, it's it's five days a week uh, for the whole championship meet. Well, I'm it's aware. not the championship meet. From next Wednesday right on until April. I'm aware. Ronnie. You are? <laughs> Wednesday. You know. We'll be with you 12-10 on Wednesday. Ronnie and I... 11-10 on Wednesday, and that gets it started. As, as he said, it's not quote-unquote the championship meet. If you've been watching our races the past three or four days, no, everybody's here. Yeah, it's going to be getting better and better. I was just looking at some of the races next week. We'll see Jose uh, Ortiz back, and they, they, you know all the jocks will be here, certainly around by Christmas time. So it should be fantastic, and that's just for us. We're going to turn it over to Pete Aiello with all the scratches and jockey changes you might need to have a winning day. I remember the first time I came to Gulfstream, it was like this big fairy tale place. We back. Northern Dancer, winner of the Florida Derby. Yeah. All the history, and all these great horses, trainers, jockeys. It is Barbaro to the final furlong. He is a neck and front. Barbaro wins! It was everything that I ever dreamed of. Sunday silence surges to the front. First day, opening day of the championship, me, I was kind of starstruck. You're watching LeBron James, and then next thing you know, you're playing basketball against him. That's how I felt when I'm riding with Donny V, riding with Ira, Luis. So many famous people come. Post Malone, for all J Lo was there. It's epic. The weather is beautiful. The facility is phenomenal. It's all about Nick's go. Nick's go makes it four in a row. It's one of the most beautiful tracks in the country, surrounded by some of the greatest horses and riders. It's just, it's amazing. And hello again, everybody, and welcome to a spectacular Sunday afternoon of world-class thoroughbred racing live at Hallandale Beach, Florida at Gulfstream Park. It's a beautiful day in South Florida with temperatures in the low 80s. We have 10 races on the card today with a first post time 21 minutes out at 12.10. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the simulcast partners to the broadcast here today. Fans joining us from all across North America and all across the world. Welcome to Hallandale Beach. The main track is fast. The Tapita track is always fast. And the turf course is firm. With that in mind, and if you have your programs handy, here now are the program changes for today's races. First race, first half of the early daily double. The start of the 50 cent early pick five. In the first race, scratch the 13, drinks on me. Race one, scratch 13. Turn to the second race, start of the early pick four at seven furlongs. Change of rider for four, Queen Rocket. Make the rider Lionel Reyes. Lionel Reyes rides four, Queen Rocket in race two. Third race on turf at one mile, scratch number two, Frosty O'Toole. Number two, Frosty O'Toole withdrawn from the third. Fourth race on Tapita track at a mile and 70 yards. Take out the 10, first gold. Number 10, first gold, withdrawn from race number four. Race five today starts the rainbow six on the turf. In the fifth race, number seven, stuck on kitten, a change of jockey. Make the jockey Sonny Leon. Sonny Leon rides seven, stuck on kitten. Scratch number eight, village queen, and scratch the 11, standoff. That's eight and 11, withdrawn from race number five. Start of the rainbow six. Race six is the first leg of the late pick five in race number six. Scratch number three, Arete's Chalice.
The three is out of race six. In the seventh race on the turf at a mile and a sixteenth, scratch number six, Journeyman, and scratch number seven, Dominate the Moment. Six and seven withdrawn from race number seven. The eighth race starts the late pick three. It's a field of seven. There are no changes. The ninth race is the first half of the late daily double. In race number nine, we're on the turf at one mile. There are no changes. Race 10 on the program on Tapita track at five and a half furlongs with a field of 12. No changes in the Sunday finale. With the 10-race format, the 20-cent Rainbow Six begins with race number five today. You're playing for a gross jackpot pool guarantee of $150,000. The main track is fast, the Tapita track is fast, and the turf course is firm. Wagering windows open on all levels. We're certainly glad to have you with us. We hope you have an enjoyable afternoon at the races, and good luck today. It is time for the early pick five at Goldstone Park. The first five races on the card, a 50 cent base wager and a low 15% takeout. Don't miss out on the early pick five starting now at Goldstone Park.